Asuka and Mickey James had a pretty weird finish to their match last night. And we're going to talk about that and the whole episode of last night's Raw with it's Keith Lee versus Drew McIntyre match. It's frustrating retribution running and Dominic still being awesome. I'm Mr. Davis. I'm joined welcoming the debuting stand-up guy. I met him last week for the first time ever at Quizzlemania. He won that and became instant best friends. It's Mr. Oh. Wrestle Talk. Oh, thank you so much for that very, very warm introduction. My debut on the channel, of course. Uh, thank you all uh, so much. I've, I've had such lovely, welcoming responses. My Twitter handle is there, Mr. Underscore Wrestle Talk. 100% definitely not Luke Owen. So thank you so, so much for not only being your Quizzlemania champion, um, but also now doing the Raw review with you. What, what an honor it is to be hanging out with you, Mr. Davis. Straight up the big leagues. I'm sure. I'm sure Chopper's fine with it. I, 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 I'm. I'm sure it is. Look. Look at this guy here. Told him on the off. Yeah. Juba. Juba. Ju, ju, I, I've uh, never Jubba heard J, of before. Juba J T J. He's, oh, sorry. He's a great guy. Uh, but I'm, no, I'm no. So, we'll, I'm we'll, so new. We'll get on to any of that stuff later because first off, we've got to talk about the Mickey James Asker match and we'll dive into the whole episode of Raw and everything that happened there. Uh, a really good match uh, to kick off with. It was sort of the third match of the show. It was a Raw Women's Championship match. They had a really decent five minute back and forth bit of action. You know, the, the sick Mickey James kick to the, not a, not a chick kick or a kicky James. Just a normal kick uh, to Asuka while she was tied up in the ropes. Asuka would grab Mickey's arm, get her in a submission. That sort of classic, just spinning round, not looking back where elbow. you're going. Asuka back fist. Really good stuff. And then all of a sudden, Asuka gets the Asuka lock in. Mickey is going to do that spot where you flip over and turn the Asuka lock into a pin because Asuka's shoulders would be on the mat. And... When Mickey James has half done that, the referee calls for the bell, says Mickey James has tapped out. Mickey James is furious momentarily. She's like, what the hell? No, I didn't. And then she's kind of played off by a band. D -d 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 Play me off, Johnny. And Zelina Vega walks out and starts up the next segment. Yeah, it was bizarre because like the commentators didn't really know what was going on. I, I believe the report is you, you've got the, the tweets to, to read out from Foley and Lance Storm saying that it was an injury and that's why they sort of called the match finished. But I mean, watching it back and like watching it at the time, Mickey James didn't seem to be the one that said like, oh, ow, my shoulder is popped. It was very much she just sort of like this look of confusion and sort of like, as you said, like anger of just like that the match was called early. Because she definitely didn't tap, 100% didn't tap. There was no pinfall or anything. And then it was just sort of like, everything just sort of stopped. Like time stopped for a while. And the commentators were like, no idea what's going on here. They weren't trying to cover for it. So I instantly thought, I was like, oh, it's because they were playing this off. This is going to be Mickey James's last tight, like last chance at a title match, last chance of winning the title, they'll run this as the story that Mickey James is, you know, she was screwed out of her last chance. But then, yeah, she just rolled at ringside. Referee went out to talk to her and Selena Vega came out and we just sort of pretended that the Mickey James thing never happens. So Lance on tweet, hope Mickey James is okay. I think the referee said her shoulder popped out. So if you go back, you can see, like, sort of see the referee talking. Seems like it mouths that he says the ref uh, the shoulders popped out and then mcfoley added to that saying i'm hearing that mickey james may have injured her shoulder in tonight's raw which would explain the quick ending to the match if true wishing mickey uh quick and complete recovery so yeah i think it, it's weird because the last two weeks wrestlers getting injured in the ring has been quite a hot discussion point. Of course, there was the Matt Hardy instance at All Out uh, a week and a half ago, two weeks. What is time anymore? Where the match definitely should have been called off a lot quicker than it was. Then on Wednesday, no, sorry, the, the two nights after, Ivar hit this dive to the outside, seemed to like stun his neck. He's got a history of neck problems. He immediately threw up the X sign and they called off the match, which led to another botched finish. Cedric Alexander mm -hmm. knew, the referee knew, but Ricochet didn't know. Uh, Cedric Alexander won with 
uh, some kind of powerbomb pin, I think, and Ricochet kicked out at two, but the referee still called it, called for the bell. The announcers didn't know what was going on either. So it's very similar to that instance. And, you know, unfortunately today there's now reports that Ivar is getting quite a serious neck operation right now, uh, oh. which might take him out for a year, which is just terrible for the guy and terrible for the Viking Raiders and Eric as well. We'll get into that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of, I can see why referees might be a bit hot on the, Oh, I'm going to be cautious. And you yeah, know what? Okay. I think that's the right thing to do. I would much rather people not have serious injuries and, you know, to te not take the risk to just do an, a minute more wrestling. You can do the match another day. Uh, but in this case, I, I do think they were probably overly cautious because Mickey seemed to be totally fine. Yeah, it was a bizarre one. I, I just saw a chat that that came up uh, there. I don't know if, if someone can follow up on this, but um, apparently I uh, we'll asked for the moderators to do so. But they said one of the rumors going around is that Vince wasn't a fan of the match and asked for it to be called early. Now, I've, I've not seen this reported anywhere, so I don't know uh, if there's any truth to that or where that report's come from. Yeah. Um, as far as I could tell, it very much was like a shoulder injury in the referee whether Mickey knew or not, or like the referee heard it go, maybe I don't know. He heard the pop and was just like, I'm going to call this match now. I, I've no idea what's going on, but it was, yeah, it, it was weird because I was, I really liked the match. I thought the match was, was really good. I thought they were working together really, really well. And I was kind <coughs> of, I, I was thinking while this was going on, man, I wish this was on pay per view and we didn't have to cut to a commercial break so we could enjoy all of this. But, um, yeah, I, I I was I was a fan of this match, but the, like the the finish just seemed really really weird, really weird. It's a shame because yeah, a big part of the story was this is Mickey James's last go, uh, and I think Which if I anything it was an angle. That's why I thought it yeah. was an angle <laughs> until until Zelina Vega came out. If anything, I think this proved no. I want Mickey James versus Asuka to be the main program going for at least two pay per views, not. Asuka versus Zelina Vega, which we'll get into when we do the full play-by-play -play review. Well, uh, getting your su 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 super chats with your thoughts on Raw, folks. Uh, let's just do a few of the Raw-related ones right now. We will read out every single one of them before the end of the show. You know, chat to Mr. Wrestle Talk. Ask him some questions. This is your chance yeah. to talk to the debuting brand new fresh face around here. Uh, Nick Ward says, hi, boys, going to bed. So here is some money for you. Still feeling crook from the 2,370 camera cuts in the last two minutes of Raw. The blokes on the cameras are obviously drunk and can't hold still. Hashtag swaft under. There was a moment during this finale of Raw when the Hurt Business came out to face off with Retribution. I was like, finally, I am. there's something I can sink my teeth in. I can get into this angle. And then the camera works down. And I was like, oh, no, I can't because I have no <laughs> idea what's going on anymore. Where do I put my teeth? <laughs> uh, Michael Dominguez, are the Street Profits actually good? Well, Lou Going could answer that with these actually good series, but he's not around anymore. But Michael Dominguez says, to me, no. I think they're awesome. I think the I would I'd be very curious, Michael Dominguez. You don't have to super chat this in, but certainly uh, let us know in the chats and our moderators can find out whether you saw the Ren XT work, or whether you've just seen them on the main roster. Because I think if you're judging them, it's almost like the the revival. Mm. We had a lot of people who used to super chat in, at least but you know, when I've been watching this channel, that they didn't like the revival because they'd only seen them on the main roster where they were just doing lame work. But if you'd seen them down like the you know their series they had with DIY when they were awesome, and I think that's the same for the Street Profits. Well, the Street Profits are doing an amazing stuff down in NXT. Dawkins is great, but Ford man, he's a superstar, absolute superstar. I think they're a great team. It's just the WWE seem hell bent on breaking up every team that they've got. That there's going to be no one for them to face. Who are they going to face at the at the at the pay per view? AOP. Were they gone? Oh, damn it! Damn it! Uh, uh, Andrade and Angel Garza again. Ah, uh, they're broken up. Um, Duh, duh. The iconics. Nope, they're broken up. Duh. Sasha Banks yeah. and Bailey, surely. Nope, no, no they're broken up. Duh. Well, I, I, know you, I know you're going to say Murphins and Buddy Murphy. So Murphins, Rollins, even. <laughs> <And, laughs> Murphins was their that was their their team name. <laughs> Seth Murphins. Sethy Murphins. Seth, Seth, Seth Murphins. Sethy Murphins. Seth Murphins. Also broken up um, mm. is the point I was getting at. Yeah. Uh, Ollie and Luke 
Broken up. Broken up, mate. It got Marty genetted. That no good freeloader. Well, should we get on with the full raw review, play by play? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, absolutely. Oh, oh, right. Oh. I've had enough hey. of this. Hey, Chopper. Hey, Chopper. Hey, hey, Chopper. Mr. Nice, David. To, nice to meet you. Yeah, it's Mr. Wrestle Talk. The guy I was telling no, you no, about. No, it isn't. It isn't Mr. Wrestle Talk. I'm getting is. really sick of this. I feel like I'm the only one that can actually see that Mr. Wrestle Talk is quite Mr. clearly Luke. Uh, Luke. But it's not they. Chuck, what, yeah, sorry, what were you saying? I was getting my Jam That Championship for you. You are a fantastic Jam That Champion. I really appreciate you, Mr. Davis. But this this nice charade, nice this facade, this has nice to... to you, th th shut up! I'm talking! You stop talking when I'm talking, okay? You even had a banner on this screen right here in this podcast. You were plugging your own merch. How is nobody seeing that you are Luke? It's so uh, obvious. No, no, this t-shirt was given to me by Adam as like a welcoming gift. Um, no, it wasn't. I, I, it wasn't. I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain uh, to people to go and buy the Luke Warm Luke Cohen t-shirt from WrestleTalkMerch.com. How like, can I, you I, I, even I, doing I, a I can't plug explain, right now? I, I can't explain that, I'm afraid. But like, I mean, you've, you've seen my Twitter profile, right? It's definitely not Luke Owen. It doesn't make mm -hmm. sense. Totally. Why would why would I be Luke Owen? Like it doesn't make any totally sense. Totally not Luke Owen. No, okay. definitely not Luke Owen. Yeah. You know what? No, okay. That's fine. If everyone mm -hmm. wants to believe it, that's fine. Then why don't we prove it? How about on Thursday, AEW review podcast? Yeah? Mm -hmm. We Which do want, a yeah. Luke, a Luke detector test. <gasps> All right. If you pass it, then maybe I'll believe you that. Mr. Wrestle Talk isn't Luke. Okay? If you fail it, you 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 all found out. You will be Luke. Mr. Davis will see it, and then, and then you'll be gone, and we can be best friends again. Okay? Alright, alright. Chopper. Corporate Chopper. I'll take your Luke detector test on the AEW podcast this coming Thursday, and I will prove to you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that I am not Luke Owen. Fine. Hashtag Enjoy your Luke. raw podcast with your merch plugs. Bye, Chopper. It was nice to meet you, mate. Get out of here. Oh, he's a he's a grumpy chopper. He's a grumpy chopper, isn't he? That's my first time meeting him. What well, what is a Luke detector test? Uh, I mean, I'm assuming it will be like a series of questions to find out so I can prove. Watch me pose. I'm, I'm not looking. I've got on board with what you were saying. Watch me pose with my championship. Well, I, I mean, I will I will plug it again. The AEW review this coming Thursday. Watch the uh, the AEW podcast where we're going to do a Luke detector test to, for, to prove 100%. I'm not Luke Owen. Jam that yeah. jam. Jam that jam, yeah. everyone. Cool. Well, I'm, sure, I'm, sure it's, I'm sure it's nothing. He's He gets a little bit. You know, because he said he said the other week that we were best friends mm. because of the because he gave me all his points, which was really really nice of him. Really appreciated it because then I could fire Luke Owen. Uh, but yeah. you know, I actually I actually didn't deserve to win that. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I cheated. I che I I told I you know I approached Chopper. I sort of you know told him to give me his points, and he 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 jumped at the chance to get rid of Luke. Uh, but no, no, no. I, I don't know if you saw it, but I, I mean, shouldn't, I was, I was, shouldn't have fired him. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I didn't realise that it was uh, cheating shenanigans, though. No. It's uh, quite, quite the, quite the controversy. No, I'm, I'm massively cheated. You're not allowed to do that. Mm. It's right. that's against the rules. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it makes sense. Oh, well, yeah, and anyway, uh, did Chop Chop Chops got it in his head that. We were best friends after that, which, you know, I might have said we would be if he did it. But, you know, we were. We were for like a week or so. But then I met you. You're fantastic. New best friends. New best friends. Awesome. So, of course. Uh, a, bit like a bit like an air horn, that. Don't buy the lukewarm Luke Owen merch today at WrestleTalkMerch.com. Don't the, just a bit bit of mis miscommunication there between me and Mr. Wrestle Talk. We're not meant to be promoting Luke's merch anymore. Yeah, Don't absolutely. go and buy that stuff. Buy yeah. loads of the other stuff there, like the magazine mm -hmm. that comes out soon. Anyway, or, this or, or the or the Luke Warm Luke Owen T-shirt. No, sorry, no, no, not Don't that. Do that. One, like, Don't do that. Don't do that. No, sorry, not that one. But maybe yeah. make a note of that. Write that down. That you're yeah. not meant to promote him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Let me get a notepad. Um, 
I'll, I'll find a pen. I'll, I'll make a note. I'll make a mental note for now. I'm sure it's all fine. Anyway, so last night's episode of Raw was in your face. <laughs> that was the theme. What did, did did you find anything particularly more in your face than normal? Because it did have a different vibe to it. Did it? Yes. What was that vibe? More throwing stuff at the wall. Oh, I mean, I, I feel like that has been in it's been that's in place since Pritchard took over. That feel like that has been the in your face attitude of just like, here's some stuff. Hey, Christian's coming back for a match. Like that's if if that's what in your face is, then I think the, the Pritchard regime has been in your face. But this was it on on steroids to I guess you can't really say that with if this show would fail the wellness policy is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> because one of my notes, like before one of the matches, I was like, friggin' hell, this show's <laughs> stacked. Like it just keeps going. It was before Seth and Dominic. I was like, bloody hell, this we're only like two hours in. The show's packed. It was Championship Monday. It was cross brand championship Monday with the women's championship match. Cross brand invitational with the Street Profits versus the artists from SmackDown. It was Helena Cell kind of light with Seth Rollins versus match. Dominic and a Dominic in a cage. Do it Dominic. Was Dominic. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. M Murphins. <laughs> <laughs> there was the the main event Keith Lee versus Drew McIntyre. That's a pay-per-view match right there. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, a bunch of like retribution bits and other little angles happening, people breaking up new challenges. I felt like this was a stack show and they wrestled the, the, the wrestling style, I, I do think, was different. Maybe it's because there was no Randy Orton, but it seemed like there was a clear edict backstage to only wrestle wrestle your 15-minute match in either 10 minutes or 5 minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. These were fast-paced matches. Really, but really I, fast. But I like that. No, I, I, I think save your longer matches for pay-per-view in general and for TV. Play the hits. Well, this has been probably the common complaint about Raw since it went to three hours, you know, which is like nearly 10 years ago at this <laughs> point, that which was, if your show is three hours, how are you going to fill those three hours while still making people want to buy the pay-per-views or making people want to watch the pay-per-views? And a way to do that is, as you say, is to have shorter matches on the show, have more angles and make people want to buy the network and, and see the pay-per-view. So I don't think it's the worst idea in the world. And actually, like for the most part, the wrestling on this show is it's pretty good. Like it was, you know, it's either very good. It's, like, there was, I think there was probably one bad thing on this show, which was the uh, Riot Squad's Natalia Lana match. But that went like, I, I mean, 45 seconds, if it mm. went anything at all. Like, so it's hard to say it was a bad match when, you know, I've, I've had farts longer than that match. <laughs> uh, I So, you know, full disclosure, I enjoyed this episode. I gave it a four out of five. Hello. Yeah, take that, negative Nancys in the comments. I mean, I I'd probably give it an extra star just because it didn't have the Street Profits versus Andrade and Angel Gaza, which was actually like, it felt like a refreshing change of pace to see them in the ring with someone else. There was no Riot Squad versus the Iconics. Yeah. And no Keith Lee versus Randy Orton. It this was is the uh, new it, era. A totally different show. In your face. In your face, it's, negative comments. So it started off, but... That's not to say that by the end of us really unpacking every single thing that happened on the show over the next half hour won't make me bring it down to a two out of five <laughs> by, by the end of this show, this podcast. Uh, but the show opened, the Raw opened with a few stylistic differences. There was a thunder crack at the well, top yeah. of the arena. I mean, since they called this the Thunderdome, this has been a long time coming. <laughs> like this is <laughs> Vince has been sitting on this right like, well, hang on, why doesn't the show open with a crack of thunder to let them you know you're in the Thunderdome? I liked how it went from sort of that thunder crack to Drew's you know, Drew's got the sword being unsheathed sound effect to start his uh, entrance music now. I think the end game of this in the in the 2030 dysto more dystopian future of WWE, it's just going to be a soundboard <laughs> where wrestlers won't have entrance themes because you've got to pay people too much money to get the rights to those rights. It's just going to be sound effects. Oh, okay. Um, Shag, Mary, Kill, the thunder sound effect. 
the uh, unsheathing of the sword and Ricochet's gun. It's either that or Black's creaky door. Kill kill Ricochet's pew pew. Hate mm-hmm. it. Uh, marry the Thunderdome. Mm-hmm. I don't care. And yeah. yeah, Drew's sexy. He was always <laughs> going to get shagged out of those and, three. And, I wasn't even listening to the sword. question. <laughs> An unsheathing of swords is very, very sexy. Just look at Highlander. I've, I've got a question for you. Mm-hmm. If you could reduce a wrestler down to a sound effect. So I'm going to give you uh, Cesaro. Okay. Cesaro is, um, well, I mean, he's got a sound effect. Just the old entrance music. Uh, I think Nakamura is too easily. I'm just running down. Beep. Adam Pierce. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> like from Metal Gear Solid, when someone with <laughs> <laughs> a card <laughs> retribution into the arena. <laughs> huh? Pierce, Pierce. <laughs> uh, right, let's get back on track. Michael yeah. Cole is on commentary again. He was last week. Tom Phillips last week was described as being on holiday, but. When anyone's missing for longer than a week on WWE, I'm a bit like, oh, they're fired. Yeah, I had the exact same thing. I was like, do you remember when Dio Madden was just on holiday? Like, you know, like, oh, Jerry Lull is only filling in for a week. Like, he's, <laughs> he's only going to be there for a week. And then, you know, he becomes part of the furniture. I, I, I kind of had that about uh, Michael Cole being here for a week. And if Dolph Ziggler's on commentary again next week, I'm, I'm going to be a bit worried for Samoa Joe as well. Not in terms well, of, but like, I'm hoping that means he's going to have an in-ring return. Well, yeah, I, I can see the backstage officials looking at how well SmackDown's doing because SmackDown is doing very well in the ratings compared to Raw. Uh, not year on year, of course, it's disastrous, but just in the COVID era. And, you know, they often look at what works on SmackDown and see the wrong thing and think, ah, Michael Cole is the reason. So bring him over. I could see that happening. Dolph Ziggler. He's been the voice of Raw for like, you know, 10 years, 15 years at this point. So maybe it's a case that they're just like, you know, maybe people just (laughs) are used to hearing his voice. So we've got to get him back onto Raw to make people feel like they are at home with Raw. Yeah. And also Dolph Ziggler, uh, like Dolph Ziggler being on commentary, hopefully that means they're also thinking we need more star power, get Samoa Joe in the ring because he seems to be cleared. Uh, but Ziggler going on commentary, I thought, well, that that's the end, surely. There's nothing according for him to do in the... Ah, really? Uh, according to Trekkie, Booker T revealed that he tested positive. I don't know whether that's Booker T or if that's um, uh, Todd Phillips uh, um, tested positive for COVID. Thank you very much, Trekkie386, for letting us know that. Um, do we um, know that for sure? That's not, let's not say... Not say for certain. Because I haven't seen that reported anywhere. I've just done a quick Google. Don't take that for... Yep, let's not take that. Let's, let's uh, not on. take that at all. <laughs> you can't just say people have uh COVID. Yeah, no, I've, 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 I've googled tom booker t tom phillips and yeah there's nothing about that anywhere on the internet stop no. posting fake things in the chat people yeah so d- scrap that from the record oh, that is not a thing that apparently happened confirmed, apparently confirmed on his twitter the mods are saying huh well well you know we don't we we're on air right now we can't research that so let's not stick to it because that is a serious thing to say that someone's got uh, an illness. Uh, so yeah, but Dolph, in terms of Dolph Ziggler, there's pff, raw underground commentary. The guy. Well, I mean, we had we had commentary on raw underground uh, this week. Did you notice that? Was that did that happen last week? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the main show starts with Drew McIntyre coming out and he cuts a promo on Randy Orton saying, "I we keep on ending up in ambulances. So a clash of champions, let's make it an ambulance match. How did we not see this coming? Sorry, just to confirm. Bit of confusion, obviously. Booker T reveals he tested positive for COVID-19. So Booker T has <laughs> tested positive for COVID-19. Yeah, yeah we got there in the end. Nothing ends. related to Tom Phillips. Yeah. Nothing. Good grief. <laughs> Good grief. Sorry, that I, I'm going to take the blame for that one. It's my first show. Um. So, yeah, so we're going to get an ambulance match, presumably, at Clash of Champions. 
And then Drew like, like, did his. Like you, like, sorry, like you said, I don't know how we didn't see that coming. Yeah. Like that, like that was coming a bloody mile off after last week. But then Drew did his own bad Photoshop. So last week, Randy was like, "Oh, look at all the people I've taken out with the punts." And it had Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels and Big Show and Christian and Edge all, you know, badly photoshopped into a into a hospital, into an A&E. I didn't mind that because it was a bit crappy. It didn't fit with Randy's character, but it was whatever heel stuff. It's crap. But when Drew did it, in what was somehow a worse Photoshop job, but seemingly done by the same person, I, yeah, I thought that was a big misstep for Drew. It's it's not the Drew character, man. Like, and I said this about the oh, I believe Luke Warm Luke Cohen said this about the Randy thing. Like that didn't feel like it was in Randy's character either to be, mm. you know, like posting up these fake Photoshop images. It feels even less in character for Drew to do it. It's the first time where Drew's come off as a bit unlikable, a bit like a dork. And uh, which is a shame, really, because I think they've done such a great job with Drew since he won the like, even before he won the title, pretty much since January, they've done a fantastic job with building Drew. But yeah, this was um, a bit of a bit of a misstep for me. Also, did I? I mean, I know this is my first show here, um, but you know, I have been watching Raw. When did Adam Pearce become the GM of both Raw and SmackDown? Apparently today. Or, or yesterday. <laughs> he, so Adam Pierce then comes out, and he's been across the backstage bits for months now. Uh, but with Retribution, the scourge of Retribution continually invading both shows, he is now he now gets two backstage segments a week at least, where he tells off security guards for letting Retribution invade, never taking responsibility for him himself for like maybe putting more precautions in place. But he's also booking matches. Mm. So I, uh, I, I'm. Uh, is this WWE? Because WWE a couple of years ago said we're not doing authority figures anymore. You, the fans, hate authority <coughs> figures, so we're just not doing them anymore. Uh, but then they were like, "Oh, but well, we do need an authority figure. What if we just make it the GM, but don't tell anyone that he's the authority figure? Then we're not going back on our word. So we've now got a GM, but he's not a GM. Yeah, it's a it's a storyline crux because. How do you get this information out naturally? So what they were trying to get to here was they needed someone to say, if Randy can't make Clash of Champions because he's still injured with the, the continued claimers, and Keith Lee beats you tonight, Drew, Keith will be taking Randy's slot at the pay-per-view to fight for the WWE title. That set up like a pretty good bit of tension for the rest of the night, I thought, to build Keith Lee versus Drew in the main event. But it's an incredibly clunky thing <laughs> to introduce, which none of the wrestlers could feasibly do, right? So yeah, rather than come up with something else, they were just like, oh, let's go back on that thing we said we wouldn't do and yeah. put Adam Pearce in there. Because Drew even says, who put you in charge? Mm. And I was like, <laughs> they were like, doesn't matter. Here's Keith Lee. And uh, they came out and they had like, you know, a, a tense handshake uh, sort of uh, agreement for the match later on. It is clunky, very, very clunky. Um, and yeah, with sort of no storyline explanation, just makes it even clunkier. Um, it also like, because Drew says in this promo that he is, he was injured. He was injured by Randy Orton. He was injured so bad. He's fractured his jaw. And the doctor said he'd have to take time off, otherwise he'd have to vacate the title. Or, you know, like, you have to take time off and vacate the title. And it's like, well, no, I'm not taking time off. So my question is, what doctor's cleared him to wrestle? Because yeah. he's wrestling on this show. He's wrestling at the pay-per-view. What doctor's cleared him? He's got a fractured jaw. He's apparently not allowed to wrestle. Otherwise, you know, he's going to vacate the title. There were many logic holes here. And we'll never get answers. <laughs> It's all right. Who cares? Uh, speaking of logic holes, uh, the artists, Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro, the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, then took on the Raw Tag Team Champions, the Street Profits, for no reason. And I thought, OK, well, you know, maybe this is the way to start building a Clash of Champions feud between the two. Clashing of Champions. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Gold Rush. And... That that didn't happen at all. I thought they had a really fun back and forth match. They just rammed about 15 minutes worth of uppercuts into five minutes. Uh, sick power bomb on the barricade by oh. Nakamura and Cesaro on Ford. Ford took a lot of bumps in this. And yeah, in the end, Street Profits went over clean. 
pretty decisively. Yeah. Where do you go from here? Just one. Dawkins did a not as good version of the Frog Splash as Montez Ford. It's almost like Dawkins said, do you mind if I ever go? Do you mind if I ever go and did it? I hope that they went backstage and was like, oh, I think you should probably do it from now on. Yours, yours is way better. I, I, thank you for giving me the chance, but I think yours is way better. But yeah, like you, like they just beat them. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, in WWE, that doesn't mean the feud is over. Really, that just means the feud can now start. Oh, ho, ho. this is just beginning. <laughs> uh, so then we cut backstage. And Gaza is trying it on with Lana. And as soon as I saw that, I thought, of course they are. For Rusev <laughs> turning up in AEW. Well, either that, I'm guessing that, like Debbie Burnett's not available anymore. So they were just like, we'll just replace her with a different blonde and hope no one asks questions. I'm I'm happy with that. She was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then Zelina Vega and Andrade came over. And Andrade and Gaza start scuffling and Vega's like, I'm done with you two. I can't do this anymore. I don't care. They've never, well, there's nothing to get invested in them losing. They were never a coherent unit long enough for us to care. Just it, whatever. And now, of course, Vega is going into this program with Asuka. I think she'll get like a month long feud. They'll realize she's a better manager than she is a wrestler and then not have a need for a manager either. So she'll get dropped. I don't see Gaz getting anything after this. And weirdly, I don't see Andrade going anywhere either. No, I've got worries for all three of these here. And like, can you imagine if this is the end of the Andrade Vega partnership? Like this is just how it ends and they just move on. Like what a waste, what a waste of an angle that could have been. And wrestlers, Gaza and Andrade yeah. are two of the the best wrestlers. Like new wrestlers, a different kind of wrestler from that lucha tradition. But yeah, uh, after that, we got Cedric Alexander coming out with the Hurt Business, who he's with now, and they had a pretty decent back and forth promo with a mean looking Apollo Cruz who wasn't mm -hmm. even smiling, and Cedric had a grudge match against Ricochet. Really decent stuff, but very quick, and Cedric won clean. Yeah, he just, just won, which is absolutely fine. You know, you want to get this new heel character over? Makes sense. Also, Ricochet did an incredible sell job of the lumbar check. I don't know how he used his own lower back to springboard <laughs> off of Cedric's knees and do an yeah. extra flip. People have always said that Ricochet's got springs in his feet. It turns out he's actually got springs in his lower back. That's that's where the springs are actually <laughs> hidden. Pew pew. <laughs> uh, the I thought this was you know this was good stuff, but it's another example of WWE having a long term feud. Right, this Cedric Alexander Ricochet storyline has been going on for about seven months. It's been going on a long, long time, man. And they blew off the turn, the like the first heel turn match between them with a three, four minute throwaway thing on Raw. You know, maybe may, that'll be good for Cedric, but it's it's frustrating to not make more of that because man, Ricochet versus Cedric Alexander is a is a feud I'm very much into. Yeah, on pay per view, given some time, given fifteen minutes for that. No, I think this, this is probably like this is what that this feud is. It's a TV feud that's not really going anywhere else. Uh, also, in all this, Eric of the Viking Raiders ran down, started tussling with Bobby Lashley when there was a brawl outside that set up a match later on. Uh, oh, and then Cedric, you know, Cedric won. Hurt Business are about to celebrate when Retribution's graphics cut everywhere and they cut a promo so generic, so mind-numbingly scripted, I have not written a single word down about its content. Oh, it was ludicrous. I, I, I listened to the podcast that you and Chopper did last week where you, you were not a fan of uh, the Retribution promo. I can completely understand why this was bad, man. Like this is they like the key to this is that they said they're all performance center recruits. So yes. like it, I guess to kind of like dispel some of the the sort of fantasy bookings that it's some of the fired people from earlier this year. This was them saying, no, 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 we're from NXT, and it was quite clearly Dijak, uh, Mercedes Martinez, Amir Yim, and Dio Madden. I think was one of the other ones. And like I don't know, man. It's just they just cut this. Like poor Mercedes Martinez was just cutting this awfully generic nonsense. It was just like, I, I'm not into this team, man. Not into them. But really, I, I suddenly thought about this today. 
there's a reason that this is all building so they can get some Survivor Series stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Because NXT did its best numbers around <clears throat> Survivor Series last year when they were putting Raw and SmackDown on NXT. So is this just a way to kind of like facilitate Raw and SmackDown uh, guys and girls to get onto NXT and bump the numbers? So you think they plan that far in advance? No, no, I think they just, I just think they were like, let's do an invading faction. They never knew what the long-term plans for were, were for it. Probably Dominic Dijakovic was always in their heads, but I think that's the only constant in yeah, terms of long-term planning. 100%. And I now think that it's been going on so long with no direction. They're like, oh, Smeg, have you noticed we're actually really close to Survivor Series? We could do it at Survivor Series. But then they made them Raw exclusive too. I, I, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Yeah, and, yeah. and whatever yeah, we right. say now could change a million times yeah. by the end of uh, next week's Raw. Uh, yeah, but the, right. the other thing, other than that, they're performance center people, which hints that they're, you know, why should we care? They're not good enough to be on NXT. And they look they like jabronis. <laughs> no, they're the performance center recruits. They're not Tommaso Ciampa. Was it Martinez was in the main event of NXT last yeah, week. Yeah, I guess I guess so. That's a good point. Um, I just that when when the thirty other people join the shot, so you've oh, got like yeah. those people, you know, they're the main ones. Then like yeah, eight other people join the shot at the end of it, being like, "Oh, there's more of us." And then later on in the main event, flipping twenty people invaded. Like, who are the others? You're. It's never going to be paid off. It's so frustrating. Yeah. Also, I'm so mad at Keith Lee and Drew for just not unmasking those fools when they did, when they laid them out at the end of the show. Come on, guys. Uh, after that, we got the Ask and Mickey James stuff. Uh, sort of scheduled within all this, the Hurt Business went up to Adam Pierce backstage and said, we'll offer you our services against Retribution because, you know, they just interrupted them twice now, I think, in concurrent weeks. And that that was cool. I love mm. MVP. I really like the Hurt Business. And they've so been building cool. so steadily over the months. And now it's like, oh, they're kind of at that precipice where they could become an incredibly badass babyface faction. Particularly in this moment here, because they're talking to Pierce and they say, like, your security sucks. What you need is the Hurt Business to protect Raw. And Adam Pierce is like, great fantastic thank you so much for volunteering and they all just laugh and be like this isn't a charity yeah this is a business like you know I'll, I'll i'll let you know our rates that it made them look like absolute badasses but it was so cool then we got the ask a mickey james match with the sort of botched finish uh and then selena vega walked out to challenge Asuka for the next title program yeah selena vega with her stellar uh, singles track record to uh, allow her to get this <laughs> World Women's Championship match. Um, I'll do a little bit of research, find out exactly what her stellar um, reign is. This is the, um, like we talked about this with Mickey James, like bring her back, have her win a couple of matches. Also, if this is the end of Mickey James in WWE, what a wet fart of a comeback this has been, right? A match yeah. that was distracted by Seth Rollins, a match that went, uh, you know, 90 seconds, and then this. Man. Not, not great. They don't see anything in her. Yeah. She's Mickey freaking James. Uh, so um, she had a tag match um, back in late August where she got beaten by Bianca Belair and the Riot Squad. Nice. She got beaten by Bianca Belair earlier that month. Strong. Uh, then we go, we go back to uh, April. She got beaten by Bianca Belair. Um, then early in uh, April as well. She got beaten by Bianca Belair and the Street Profits. Mm -hmm. She was in the Royal Rumble. She didn't win. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, she won in November of last year in a tag <gasps> match with Andrade and Zelina uh, against... Umberto Carri... No, no, no. Sin Cara and the Random Lady Door. That's right. Carolina. Uh, that is why I am your jam <laughs> that champion of wrestling trivia... Singles matches, still no wins though. September, she got beaten by Ember Moon twice. Well, it's because uh, she's been she's been Carmella. dealing with she's been dealing with Andrade and Gaza, been holding her back. Got beaten by Piper Niven at Worlds Collide. Mm. But you know, it's this kind of singles track record that is uh, is going to push her to the moon in terms of title matches. Now, where is Bianca Belair? Oh yeah. I, don't know. Event, I, I think I think she was someone Vince was high on backstage. 
which is now the kiss of death. I'm sick of writing <laughs> these headlines, <laughs> shooting on them hard. Uh, so after that match and that angle, uh, Keith Lee told Charlie Caruso backstage in the fake ring area that he'll do what he must to become WWE champion. Not a heel turn, but like the first bits of what, what's the right word? It was the first bits of proper standing up for himself that he's shown so far being on the main roster because up until now it's been all, oh, I'm so happy for Drew. We're best friends. And Drew's been ruining his matches, making him lose via DQ. And now he's saying, no, I want that title. Yeah, I. this is my favorite thing on the show. I I love this Drew McIntyre, Keith Lee storyline. Like, I, they've given us kind of no TV time to be like, here's why these guys are best friends. They've just told us, oh, no, they're the best of friends. They've been best friends for years, which is it's bad storytelling. But I think these guys are doing really well with the story they've been given. And Keith in particular, like the, his first night there when Drew got sent off to the local medical facility and Mean Charlie is just like, hey, Keith, you're dumb. What, what have you got to say <laughs> to yourself? And Keith's like, you know what? I, I didn't really like him getting inv involved in my matches. That, that's not really cool, but we're friends. So, you know, it's, it's chill. And then later on, he has that promo where he's just like, it seems funny that the only match that you've not interfered in is the one where I beat Randy Orton. And then when they had that brawl, it felt like really mm. like visceral. And like, I've, I'm really enjoying these two working together. I, I I agree. I agree. I am a little bit concerned about Keith's style of delivery here. It wasn't full Keith Lee stylized delivery. It was more, it was more like he was told, hey, tone that stuff down. Talk more like our script. Uh, yeah. But but that could also be because he's trying to get over a more serious demeanor and a more pissed off attitude towards Drew. So yeah. th that's my concern right now. Hopefully it's the latter and he'll be back to full on Keith Lee Bursk in my glory. It'll be that next week as opposed to the more flattening out of the unique style of his character. At the very least, they've not driven that catchphrase into the ground just yet. Mm. You know, give them time, but they haven't done it just yet. Yet. <laughs> uh, after that, in a terrible show of faith for Eric of the Viking Raiders, of course, his tag partner is out. For a long time, it seems, Ivar is undergoing surgery right now, apparently, reportedly. Eric came out for a match against Bobby Lashley. Why is this not a Raw Underground match? This like has <clears throat> Raw Underground written all over it. And Bobby Lashley made Eric tap in the full Nelson in two minutes. Yeah, I've just got my notes here. MVP replaces Ziggler on commentary. Bobby Lashley wins. And that was the match. Eric is Eric's dead in the water. But it's it's just a, such a shame. So talented. Such a mm -hmm. good wrestler. He could have a decent mid-card run without Ivar. But... WWE don't see anything in the Viking Raiders, and they certainly don't see anything in Eric as a solo act. Absolutely not. Uh, Kevin Owens told Sarah backstage, Sarah Schreiber, uh, that he's going to make Alistair Black regret picking a fight with him. And Did then you call he her Sarah Schreiber. What set is it? Sa Sarah Schreiber. <laughs> Sarah Schreiber, I think it is, isn't it? The problem is, I've been calling her not Renee Young Renee. for a year, <laughs> and I forgot what her real name is. So. Kevin Owens walks out of shot backstage and then Alistair Black walks into shot to do the sort of moody eye patch stare at him as he goes. And they just thought, Kevin Owens would have seen you. Yeah. You were right, right? there to walk <laughs> into shot. Yep. Oh, it was so poorly staged. So poorly staged this. And yeah, I mean, we'll get to their match later on. But I've got to ask, like, why wasn't Blackout for the during the main event bit? Why wasn't he angry at Retribution? Uh, because they don't know what they're doing. Then bald Braun Strowman turns up outside Raw Underground's platform nine and three quarters and <laughs> said, "Open the door for me, Shane. I cannot enter this Raw Underground realm if the door isn't opened for me." My, do you know what my favorite thing about this was? It was Michael Cole, bless Michael Cole, tripping over himself because he's been told the information. This isn't part of the quarterly brand invitational. 
So he has to explain to the audience why Braun Strowman is allowed to be on Raw Underground, but it's not part of the quarterly <laughs> brand invitation or like Cesaro and Nakamura were earlier in the show. So he's there just tripping over himself to be like, I, I guess that there's, there's just anyone can show up at Raw Underground. There's no rules, I guess. Well, Braun Strowman turned up there. We've, we've got the, the artist turning up earlier. And in a few segments time, Mandy Rose is coming to Raw to become Mandy Knight Raw. And I'm like, yes. they're all different <laughs> rules right now. Anyone can turn up for Raw Underground. There's the cross-brand quarterly invitational bollocks. And Mandy Rose is a, appears to be a draft switch, which Miz agented. Yeah, okay. So as far as I can tell as well, so because a lot of people have been talking about, well, who's being traded? Because, you know, it is like, Mandy Rose has been traded to Raw. Like, who's she been traded for? And I, my answer to this is, no, that is the trade. The trade was Mandy Rose has gone to Raw. Like, there's no one going in return. She has just gone to Raw now. You know what I think? Brock Lesnar's day, like, returning on Friday to start a feud with Roman Reigns. <laughs> Babyface Brock. And it will be a trade for Mandy Rose. Just like how the previous time... It was Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross got yeah, traded is... for the WWE champion Brock Lesnar. Yeah, made sense, really. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. So after that, uh, we we got a sort of a bunch of segments building up to Seth Rollins versus Dominic, which to WWE's enormous credit, I thought they did a cracking job with. This felt like like a big deal Seth going yeah. against Dominic because they they had a bit backstage with Seth and Buddy where Seth explicitly told Buddy don't come out to ringside listen to Buddy Seth listen to what the guy's saying you've only got yourself to blame and it cuts to the Mysterios and they're all like hyping up Dominic and then yeah they had a really good cage match yeah, really, really good, actually. Yeah. Also, Truth um, does com uh, does comedy with Kit Kats, and then was that, we got this was that an advert? Yeah, because there was the Riot Squad match later on was sponsored by Kit Kats, uh... so I'm guessing this was like a product placement thing that they had done. But um, yeah, this was a fun little cage match, really. Like very early on, Murphy was there at ringside handing Seth Rollins the, the kendo stick. But then Ray hands one to uh, Dominic so they can kind of wail on each other. They both got crotched at one point. Dominic, man, he's good. Like I know mm. he's in there with Seth Rollins. So you can you know carry anyone to a really good match. But Dom's got it. Man. <clears throat> Absolutely. 23. And looks like he's been in there for years at this point. Really, really well good. I, I really like him. I don't think he looks like a veteran. I think he oh, looks no, not like... Oh, no, not like a veteran, no. Yeah, I think he looks like a really plucky guy who's got a sort of youthful charisma about him. And he's working with Seth Rollins and Buddy and Rey Mysterio. Of course they're going to make him look good. And they're always hardcore stip matches. This was a steel cage match. It's not just that. You've got the entire Mysterio family at ringside. You've got Buddy at ringside as well for Seth. There are so many layers of smoke and mirrors here. And at the base of it, Dominic is pretty solid and can do like some really decent high spots too. And it's, it's frustrating to see WWE realize you can package someone in a feud, in a faction, and turn them over time into a star that's what they're mm -hmm. doing with him here why can't they do that with anyone else <laughs> they do it when they want to when yeah. they feel like it's worth their time and effort they they'll do it ray mysterio made them a lot of money and he also turned down a lot of money from aew to stick with them so they kind of got to appease him now which is why uh angie and Aaliyah are also getting pushes uh on the main roster when has that ever happened? Oh, you signed on the dotted line. We're now going to fill, fulfill everything we promised you. Angie's going to have an affair with Titus O'Neil. <laughs> that was it. Mark my words in a few weeks' time. But this was a really decent match. Uh, had a lot of Buddy Murphy interference, really, which sort of backfired on Seth at one point. Uh, Seth hit this superplex off the top rope, but kind of with Dominic draped over the top of the cage as well into a Falcon arrow. Dominic takes some hellacious bumps and yeah, Seth wins with two stomps. Really good. Sh again, short five, seven minute match, but loads of stuff put in there. And it was very, very exciting. I tell you what, it's a credit to WWE here, or at least, you know, certainly a credit to Rollins and Mysterio in that 
this feud between Seth and Ray has been going on for months months this has been going on for and actually the the feud between him and dominic feels like it's been going on forever because they've had seven matches in three Mm. weeks but yet every time they do it i'm like man i'm enjoying this really really enjoying it like when they announced seth versus dominic in a cage match i was like oh god again with this match and then as soon as they said in the ring i was like oh no actually i really do like this Mm. match this is actually it's actually really good stuff and like my note at the end was like i guess this feud must continue because dominic hasn't got his big win but because you've got the Buddy stuff now, where Buddy Murphy, like he stopped Rey Mysterio from helping Dominic get out of the ring. And then while he was dealing with Rey, he didn't notice that Seth was about to get out the door. So he turns around to slam the door and he slams it into Seth's face, like almost costing Seth the match. So afterwards, Seth gets out the ring and starts wailing on uh, Buddy Murphy, beats him up around ringside and sort of leaves him, leaves him laying. And the Mysterio family, like Ray's already in the ring, but Angie and Aaliyah walk past and Aaliyah just has this like moment where she touches Buddy Murphy's arm. It's what our, our, the thumbnail image we got. Touches Buddy Murphy's arm. And there are already people talking about it. I was like, oh man, what if they do like a Romeo Juliet, like, you know, lovers, lovers between warring families storyline. Which I think is, is also, I mean, I don't know how old uh, Aaliyah is. We probably want to check that at the door before we will start fantasy booking us into this storyline. <laughs> But like, I think there is, now that you've got kind of that moment, Buddy Murphy getting a baby face turn against Seth kind of doesn't feel like the feud is being, is stale. Even though they're just having match after match after match after match, they seem to add new things every now and again just to keep it fresh. It's really, really impressive. Credit to them. Apparently yeah. she's 19, so it's okay. From a start, well, that, that's the comment saying it again. We, we learn yeah. our lesson, Mr. Wrestle Talk. You're absolutely right. Don't immediately trust the comments. Uh, the, it it's now. it's not just the it's yeah it's not just the storyline elements it's they're so innovative in the ring that they can add these different layers to the physicality as well i love the way they lingered on that shot very subtle like a, a degree of subtlety that's usually missing from wwe broadcasting uh because it you know they didn't put it over like a big deal that the commentators didn't drill it to death they didn't replay it for 14 times in the next hour it was just a layer. What was it? A layer. I called her a, a layer. A layer. Just, oh, just was, checking I on Buddy. I thought it was a layer as well. I thought it was uh, a layer as well. Apparently, she was born in 2001. I've just done a quick Wikipedia of it now. Funny enough, Ray Mysterio's Wikipedia page says um, children, too, including Dominic Mysterio. Ooh. Uh, but I think, uh, I think more than a love story, I got that Buddy will maybe start to recruit <gasps> a layer for Seth. Oh, that's good. That's that was my initial thought. I don't, you know, that's I don't, th- great. There's nothing hinting to that, but I thought that would be the the most dastardly way to corrupt a member of the Mysterio family. Yeah, that's great. Mm. Well done, you man. Thanks, man. Uh, so then we had some raw underground stuff. Should we oh, do it God. all in one chunk? Well, so, yeah, it's it's very yeah. Go on. So yeah, spread out f- for the last hour, but. Dolph Ziggler beat up someone. So then he fought Riddick Moss. Braun Strowman ran in and beat up everyone. Then it cuts to Titus O'Neil wanting to go into Raw Underground. He went in. Braun still beating people up. And he killed Titus. Like, killed him. Shane stopped Braun. I thought we were going to get Shane versus Braun at that point. Because Shane is, you know, it's weird that he hasn't properly inserted himself into a match because he's the best in the world he's a he's a legit mma fighter and then we come back later braun is still killing people including dolph and riddick at the same time and then dabba kato stands up to braun and shane books that match for next week bet you it doesn't happen um i hate raw underground man i hate it with a passion it's it, it makes me not want to watch this show like I've written in all caps, I effing hate Raw Underground. But we get commentary now. Uh, Michael Cole, um, to make it even worse, Michael Cole's now doing commentary for it, which really, like, <laughs> as the lameness. Uh, this made me laugh. Uh, Sean tweeted this earlier. Nice guy, Sean Rossap. said, um, I asked someone who was at the Raw Underground tapings, what constitutes a finish to the match there? They said, quote, I guess whenever Shane McMahon decides it's over, and it made way too much sense. <laughs> 
So that's, if anyone's wondering what a Raw Underground match is, Shane is legit just deciding when matches end. Mm. Yeah, it's, what's it mean? Like, I, we've said our bit on Raw Underground, and they didn't fix any of it here. If anything, they made it more confusing. Uh, so we'll we'll go through the other two matches pretty quick before the main event. Keith got annoyed with Drew backstage uh, for interfering in the Randy matches. They started to brawl. Uh, then we got Kevin Owens versus Alistair Black, where Black jumped Kevin Owens before the bell. Black worked over his knee for pretty much the whole time, but some retribution lights flickering let KO hit a stunner and win. So I don't know Alist where you go with that now. Well, Alistair Black also wasn't wearing the eye patch. Hmm. I mean, um, that's probably good. Imagine how difficult it is to to wrestle without depth perception. I mean, I've tried to draw without this with the, with this on. Because <laughs> uh, mania, it's difficult. But yeah, this Kevin Owens Alistair Black feud. Like Owens managed to beat him with a bad leg in the first outing in a five minute encounter. I don't care. Yeah, why why care now? Why like Black should be furious with retribution. Mm. Another another report recently was that Vince is high on Alistair Black. Okay. Alistair okay. Black just needs a gimmick change. And he came out with the gimmick change. Yeah. yeah. God, Alistair Black losing. Ah! <laughs> and then we got the Riot Squad versus Natalia and Lana in a very quick win for them to build them for the tag team championships. Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax were actually pretty funny on commentary. I really enjoyed them. Very good. Yeah, actually, I, I quite like them as a little duo. The booking last week made zero sense, but uh, I quite like them as a duo here. And then, like, after the match, um, Baszler and Jax killed uh, Lana and Natty. I'm not even sure Natty even tagged into this match at all, to be honest. And then uh, they put Lana through the table while the Riot Squad stood there and watched like assholes. Like, they could have <laughs> run down and helped out, but nope, they just stood there and watched. We're like, oh no. Uh, it made them totally unlikable. So, any contributions on this show were getting flirted with, with Angel Garza being put through a table by the safest worker in the company, Nia Jax. I, I wouldn't read anything into it. Like, I know a few people are reading into it, like it's a shot at, at Miro and AEW, but I don't buy it. Like, it's just, of course, you're going to put Lana through the table. Well, you're not going to put Natty through the table, are you? They're the one that are pseudo pushing. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe it's not a shot at Miro. It's more of a, you're sponsored by Bang Energy and all that third-party nonsense. And the main event was Keith Lee versus Drew McIntyre. Raw did a really good job of making me... I wanted to see this match anyway, but then they gave yeah. me a storyline character reason for wanting it too. Uh, Keith comes out, he's got new gear. The plunging neckline. He has, yeah. I've seen a few people say that it's worse than the skirts, but uh, I thought this was a bit of... I thought this was a major improvement over the uh, the shirt. Um, yeah, I thought he looked pretty cool. The music still sucks, but I thought he was... Uh, I thought he looked really good in the singlets. So I thought he, I thought he wrestled. I, I, to be honest, I'm over it. I don't really care anymore. Um, he looks much better with just the shorts. But what are you going to do? But I thought he, his demeanor, his attitude was more pissed off. I, 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 I liked it. I liked the way he moved around more. Him and Drew had a pretty decent back and forth. I thought Drew's belly to belly suplex on him looked awesome. Keith kept on going for the jaw. Drew mm -hmm. jaw a bit of a heel move right uh but i think that was more lee wanting to win and i start writing oh i'm actually quite enjoying this how the hell are they gonna end it there's only three minutes left of the show oh no it's gonna be another no contest and wouldn't you believe it after having two dq losses to randy orton uh a, a loss to randy orton and a triple threat and what were the other things Oh, and Randy. one victory, one victory against Ziggler and beating Randy at the pay per view payback. It was another screw finish here, no contest. When Retribution ran in, like 30 Retribution members ran in and called off the match. Yeah. Didn't like it, man. Like it's, but you know, Retribution came in, caused the no, caused the no contest, but it's fine. In a way, it's fine because we get Drew. Uh, we can say Drew and Keith for the pay per view. Like I say before, our pay per view down line, we can actual finish. That I don't mind. It sucks that, you know, bearing in mind as well, the WWE at one point in this show said that they look after their fans more than any sports or entertainment company in the world or something ridiculous. But yeah, Retribution came out and caused this, this no contest. And then I was like, 
the Hurt Business come out. And for the first time in since they debuted, I was like, okay, I'm interested now. I'm interested to see the Hurt Business come out and beat the heck out of Retribution. And they brawled and they brawled and brawled. And then Lee and Drew did this big double dive. It's the most interesting Retribution have been since they debuted. Well, were Retribution interesting? Or what was everyone around them? I, I'm getting the the feel more and more because uh, we, you know, we did SummerSlam. Me and Luke before he was, you know, screwed me over and I had to fire him. We reviewed mm -hmm. SummerSlam 2010 and the whole Nexus storyline, and it became unfortunately apparent that Nexus were there to get over pre-existing main roster members, not to actually get over new people, and. Yeah. I feel like that's what the ret retribution are starting to become. Hurt Business came out. Oh, I'm very much into them. That's good. Uh, Keith Lee and McIntyre do the big flip dives to take out everyone. Oh, that's cool. I'm into them. What I'm not into in any of this, in terms of conflict, in terms of character or motivation, is retribution themselves. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I didn't think about that, but you're, you've absolutely nailed that, hit that nail on the head there. I was into I was into the Hurt Business, beating up Retribution as opposed to mm. being into Retribution being in a feud. But I, I thought it was an exciting end. I, I really, I, mm -hmm. I agree with you totally. I was really into the Hurt Business, uh, the way they presented themselves. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do next week. I'm just, I just don't care if that involves retribution or not. Uh, so overall, I'm, I'm going to stick with my four out of five because I thought as, as a bit of sports entertainment, long term, this show was just throwing stuff at the wall. But in the moment, I thought it had enough in-ring fun and enough cool moments for me to like it. Yeah, it's a three out of five show for me. Like it was, and to, and to be honest, really, that is all carried by Keith and Drew because like we didn't really talk about it much in the show, but I thought their brawling that they were doing yeah. backstage felt more real than Raw Underground, which is apparently like <laughs> real legit fights. Uh, yeah, I thought it was that's the Drew stuff with Randy and with Keith is the best thing on Raw at the moment. That and the Hurt Business, I'm really really mm. enjoying them. Just need to give Keith some actual wins, otherwise it's or or finishes because it's <laughs> difficult to get invested in his in his matches when you know nothing's going to come of them uh mm. but yes let's get on with your su 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 super chats but first we've got some patreon shout outs get those super chats in we will answer every single one of them before the end of the show but first off at 25 dollars a month or more pledge hammers on patreon here's your cheap pops the real boss matt robinson Woo -woo. you're gonna have to do these because i don't have them Oh, how do you like them apples? Marcel Dura. Yes, it's apple flavored. They drew first blood, not me. Grace Rambo. Nice. Yeah. Oh, I've got them. I've got them. I've got them. Former star athlete, now head coach, Lendell Brentson. Thank you, Lendell. Robert Spencer. Period. Nice. Very good. The fitness concierge. I mean, you're the concierge. Thank you. Scott Michael or Scott Michelle, maybe. Thank you, Scotty. Robin Banks, Lee Roberts. Nice. <clears throat> Super kick party. Andy Buckley. Yes. Moving sideways, Karen Crabtree. Very nice. The nine percenter, Garrett <clears throat> Vandercrift. 99 percenter. What did I say? Nine percenter. Oh, sorry. The 99 percenter. Jam that James Dillon. Very Thank nice. Thank you. And lastly, full of flavor, Sean Blanford. Oh, nice. yes. Thank Good you, manage. every single one of you. Go over to Patreon because we're reviewing the first all-in pay-per-view, the AEW Prologue pay-per-view. Uh, me and Mr. Wrestle Talk here making his Patreon debut. That should be up later this week. So yep, we can become a pledge recorded, hammer. We recorded <laughs> a full hour of that show today and did not even actually get onto the show itself. Yes. Uh, so, the Super Chats. James Dobinson. I like Selena Vega, but she's now set to be number one contender for the Raw title. NXT Women's Division is so much stronger. God, I miss Becky. Yeah, right? <clears throat> same here. Yeah, same. It's uh, I, I, I miss Sasha Banks and Bailey being on every show. Do you know what? I, I was talking about i was thinking about this last week when you were saying that you know there was no direction for asuka after that banks and bailey feud and i was like oh yeah because that feud was never designed to push asuka 
it was just there to push Banks and Bailey. And, and that was it. Asuka was just there to facilitate that feud. She wasn't there to be a part of it. The jam one rhyme be jam. Mickey looked really confused as to why the referee stopped the match. If she was hurt, why would she be confused? P.S. Fightful just posted a picture of Sasha Banks as a Jedi in season two of The Mandalorian. Is what? that official? Wait, I don't know. I've not even seen series one yet. Maybe it's maybe it's like a fan art or something. But yes, I, I, I totally agree about the Mickey James stuff. It seemed something seemed off there. Yeah, uh, apparently she's in the trailer and everything. Whoa. Bacon Rasher. Hi, Mr. Davis and Mr. Wrestle Dork. Loving your work so far, right? R. Mm -hmm. Huh? Those damn like, oh, these damn camera cuts again. Oh, I've got it. Those damn camera cuts again. A Metribution trying to steal a camera, but just can't manage to take it. Hashtag Andy's Jam That Jam. Uh, and he did save the company by uh, creating Jam That Jam. That could be one reason, Bacon. James Dobinson again. Do you think WWE know who the actual retribution will be? Are they heels or faces? So confused. Owens and Joe could save this angle if involved. Um, I think the Hurt Business could possibly save it now that they're involved. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if they... I, I think... Because they've been on TV for a little while now, and they're the ones that were kind of the promos. The Martinez, Yim, uh, Dijak, and D and Dio Madden seem like they're definitely part of it. Oh, and uh, Shane Thorne, I think yes, as well, formerly managed by MVP uh, Shane Thorne. Oh um, God, yeah. <laughs> so maybe like that'll be the five, the main mm. five. I don't know who Leah the Thirty are though. Uh, Bonds Array. Could Adam Pierce be the leader of Retribution? Oh my God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, he's a yes, good. he totally could be. Yes. You know the Retribution, Dijakovic, Keith Lee momentary standoff? I didn't, but of course that captures their NXT feud. Yes, so just because uh, Ollie's uh, internet broke out, sorry, Mr. Davis's uh, internet broke out a little bit there, that was, did you notice the standoff between Dijak and Keith Lee during the uh, Retribution angle? Yes, I did, of course, recapturing their NXT feud. Am I back now? Yeah, you are back now. You just been, you've been cutting in and out throughout the show. That's unfortunate. I don't know. Tidas Reggae, unpopular opinion. Keith Lee is strictly okay. I've seen his matches, promos on Indies and NXT. I don't understand the craze. A guy like Cole seems better. What, a vanilla midget? <laughs> I mean, if if you've seen the stuff that he was doing on the indies in particular, like you know his match with Dijak at, at PWG at Bola was like it's it's one of the greatest things I've ever seen. That and the the Ishii match at Ref Pro, like he is, he's a once in a generation style athlete, uh, and I think he is absolutely incredible. Yeah, maybe it's just not your what 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 sort of appeals to you. Uh, if you've seen that stuff, I can't really give you anything more to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, Rangers Mayhem. Do you think the choice of Lana being the one put through the commentary desk by Naya is in response to Miro's promo? Miro fear that Lana would have heat. Uh, yeah, I, I, I personally don't. Straight, but more petty things have happened, so I wouldn't rule oh, yeah. it out. Charlie Davis. I don't watch Raw a whole lot, but when I do catch it, I feel like Seth is doing some career heel work. I just wish he and Murphy could have a proper feud that's not tangled up in the Mysterio family. I think the Mysterio family actually adds to it a lot, and I think you can spin off from the Mysterio family stuff into a singles feud. That's why I'm really enjoying it, actually. Could still happen, yeah. I, I agree on the Seth stuff. I think he's been fantastic. I, but some mm -hmm. people really don't like the gimmick. Joshua Lieberman, banning WWE, changes Dominic's name to Dom. Mm, no, it'll just be Mysterio. They won't mm. like shorten any, they'll just get rid of it. Andre Banks, no mention of MVP's comment on Ray putting Dom in danger for 20 years. And what about what Seth comments to Angie? Oh, so, yeah, so when Seth walked off, then he I can't remember what he said now. It was about something about was, raising a child. It was, it was something like that. I was like, oh, yeah, was, or he like pointed to Angie, just like, I hope you have better luck with the next week with your other one. Something mm. along the lines of science. But it was very good. Like he's just he's doing very good heel work. Uh, Jalon McKenzie, no Ollie. This was not four out of five. Besides that, Dominic is extremely good for his age and experience. I genuinely, uh, generally think he is a prodigy. I think you mean genuinely. Um, yeah, I I think he's. It's difficult to know how good he really is because he hasn't been in there with someone of an average in ring ability yet. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of yeah. stuff around him to, he hasn't been exposed, which is a good thing. That's, that's how you should do it. But um, yeah, I haven't seen him wrestle a normal match 
you know, a match that isn't against the great worker yet for, for you to properly make that state, that judgment. Devante Lee, the 31 years old buddy stealing the 19 year old girl from her family would be totally tone deaf to everything that has happened this year in wrestling. Yes, but I, there's an argument to that. But if, you know, if it's not romantic, uh, I think you can definitely work that into just a, a general heel corruption storyline. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, agreed. Gorilla Press, we mentioned the missing eye patch, a miracle black mask that gave him his eyesight back last week. Oh, you did? Or, so or they did? Missing the eye patch. And he hit the black mask. I can't remember last week's episode that much. <laughs> Rangers Mayhem, Mox and Santana did wrestle with eye patches. They did. Did really well with it as well. Mm. Eye for an eye. So you do, you just have to have it on for about 15 minutes beforehand and your, your brain compensates for the depth perception. Uh, Matt Dennis, to play devil's advocate, how would you guys introduce new things into a feud without authority figures? I think when done well, authority figures can progress feuds. Example, William Regal in NXT. I've never had a problem with authority figures. My problem with authority figures is when they are the focus of the storylines. That was why like Constable Corbin was terrible. It's because he wasn't just the GM. He was the main event of Raw. And, you know, when they've had other... He'll, William Regal as the commissioner, Mick Foley as the commissioner, sort of back in 2000, were amazing. They were so much fun in their role. And you said that Regal as the NXT authority figure works brilliantly. He is just a guy that books matches and creates stories, right? Like, he is just there, and he will just put two people together, and that sort of spins off into a story. He's never the focus of those stories and that's why it works so well so there's absolutely no problem with heel authority figures or authority figures in general you just don't make them the focus yeah St just do it better wwe uh omega works do you reckon wwe will do an undisputed era or shield thing for the hurt business where they hold all or a majority of the titles on raw i mean the street profits do need challenges so that'd be that'd be something yeah. like putting giving cedric and benjamin the tag belts like what a great way to like like cement them and also prove to Cedric Alexander that you made the right choice by joining them. They already uh, they already run Raw Underground. They mm. established Matt in the first week of <laughs> Raw Underground, didn't they? Crackane one two three four out of five, but AW was four out of five. This was nowhere near Wednesday night show. Raw Underground is literally a slap in the face. Why is there not a one through ten rating keeping all shows equal? Um. I've gone through this many times before, Crackane. If I did that, it wouldn't be any fun and everyone would get sick of it. Because, yes, you're right. AEW's four out of five, in Raw terms, is a 10 out of five show. But based on Raw's own general standards, this was a four out of five show for Raw, for me, in my very subjective opinion. Uh, I tried to, tried to standardize it across all things, but there's simply no way to to even put New Japan and AEW in the same ballpark as WWE shows. NXT as well. Yeah, it just becomes not fun. And like at the end of the day, star ratings aren't the main thing. It's not just like looking at just the score is sort of missing the point. Like looking at the you need to taking the whole review into account before you rather than just sort of focusing on the score at the end of it. Otherwise, every raw would be a one or two out of five stars. It wouldn't. Yeah. It just wouldn't be nice. Gorilla Press, missing uh, missing over week plus fired or COVID. Oh, right. So if you're missing for over a week, it's either fired or COVID related. Uh, Station Keo, PSA, do not listen to Roar and Drive. Mm. Okay. Well, yeah, good PSA, yeah. I guess. Carlos 09E, the real question is when is Vince going to be high on me? Maybe he know. already is. Maybe he already is, Carlos. I think I read a report about it. <laughs> <laughs> probably from fightful um george <laughs> says uh what are your thoughts on the roman heel turn brilliant absolutely brilliant <laughs> yeah loved it um the weeb weeb's love or web's love one one two two do you see reigns goldberg happening in 2020 probably not in 2020 not contractually goldberg has said that he has done all his dates for the year so he doesn't want to do any more um uh, uh, Bonzo for life, motivated Orton match or motivated Brock Lesnar match? I'm assuming so. Which one do you uh, prefer? Motivated Brock. Yeah, 
Yeah. yeah, I'm way more into Brock than I am Randy. Second class, this is glass half full thought. Did they introduce Miro at Kip Sabian level to unite the two and finally pull Kip higher up the card? Uh, third tries at the charm. He also says that he thinks it should have been Jimmy. He misses him. Yeah, miss being, be Jimmy, miss, miss being miss being able, able to like to like Jimmy. To like Jimmy. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. It's just awful situation. Yeah. But the 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 Miro stuff, I'm more optimistic about now because. Just the way it's being described as a kind of Mr. Perfect style gimmick. He is the best the man. Best man. Yeah. I love that idea. Yeah. Uh, Gorilla Press says, uh, we've dubbed um, Elia or Elia uh, Tuck because we're a <laughs> weekly French Tuck. I have not the, noticed, but I'm going to keep an eye out for that. Love a French Tuck. The tan queer eye fashion tip for every occasion. Do a French Turk. Uh, Jesse says, and we'll have to catch this later. I'm still fighting COVID myself. Love the show, fellas. Stay safe. Jam that jam. Well, oh, best of you. Best of luck to you, Jesse. Yeah. Uh, Jamie Fitzgerald. Jamie Fitzgerald. Uh, I like Mr. Russell, but I really miss Luke. Uh, you're making a terrible mistake, Mr. Davis. Luke is stupid and a big idiot face. This guy's fantastic. Brett J. Rasman, thanks, man. Um, if Mr. Rustalk has to do a Luke detector test, it's only fair if Mr. Davis takes it to prove why he truly fired Luke Owen. Uh, no. Uh, William says, Mr. Rustalk, is Sonic still the best movie you've ever seen? Uh, I have seen it and I very much liked it, but it's I don't think it's the best movie I've ever seen. I don't know if Luke held that opinion either. Uh, give me a yes, please. Hashtag Luke Warm Luke Owen for, 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 for life. Um... I mean, I'll let you say that just because it's a super chat and it's been written. But um, don't give don't don't give him a yes, please. No, thank yeah, you. Don't, don't give yes, pleases in the comments. Uh, it's not the time or place for it. No. Um, Juba Juba JJ says, um, "Hi there, Mister Restock. Oh, right, it's Jobber. Sorry, uh, Juba is my twin. Um, if you're not Luke, would you like to join the Ollie Authority? I mean, what? A, what? A, yeah. I mean, I've not been officially asked." Well, it's, you know, I'm scouting you out. It's only the first week of you being here, but I I think you got promise. Second class deletus, Mr. Davis. Have you noticed we've never seen Mr. WrestleTalk and Laurie Blake in the same room? I do see a bit of a resemblance, but I have seen them in the same room. Wrestling Talk sign guy. Uh, Corporate Chopper <laughs> is so hypocritical given how he got hired. Mr. WrestleTalk seems so trustworthy. El Senor WrestleTalk Didor. Uh, it just makes sense. It yeah. does just make sense, doesn't it? Just makes sense. Jonathan Edmund, off to the gym, we'll watch later. Happy that Mr. Rest Talk likes Faith No More, so I don't have to change my Rest Talk playlist, uh, which it is, uh, which is Adam Ant and Faith No More. See you guys in a few hours. Yes, on Adam Ant. And uh, Jonathan Hedman, if you go to his YouTube channel, has cut together me singing I Am The Champion <laughs> over Queen's We Are The Champions music. And I don't hit any of the notes. <laughs> no, no, no. You hit some notes. You just don't hit the notes that are required. Not necessarily in the right order. That's right. Um, Dylan Haggett. Hey, guys, keep an eye on Twitter to see some deep fakes of the team. Mr. Davis in particular works extremely well. Oh, they're horrible. <laughs> the, the Mr. McMahon, Mr. Davis ones. Look, guys, it's a mafia movie thing. Can you stop doing it to Attitude Era events? Uh, Gorilla Press. Uh, hello, Mr. Restock. Pleasure to meet you. Welcome to the Raw Review for the first time. As for you, Mr. Davis, your electronic courier pigeon will land at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Press that press. He is risen. This continues to happen, uh, I guess. It continues to, to, to continue. Um, Don't any, any, no? He also adds, uh, that was a good and Keith Lee impression. However, it will not save you. Your reign will come to an end. He is risen. I'm sure this is really paying off uh, in the way that the that, uh, that Gorilla Press thought it would do. Really think it's paying off exactly as planned. Uh, Zachary Jenkins, Mr. Davis, I just finished Blackest Night. What should I Ooh. read next? Kind of want to read more Batman. What would you recommend? Oh, well, I'm currently reading and, and using Surfshark for the privilege to access DC Unlimited. I'm currently reading Dark Side War, which is a Justice League uh, storyline that Jeff Johns wrote through issues 40 to 50 just before Rebirth happened. So, yeah, that. Mm. Very good. Uh, John, John Marth, has Mr. Rustalk ever been to Tokyo? And if so, does he anger all Japanese men with how bad he is at using chopsticks? He gives off that vibe, jam that jam. Look, 
I have been to Tokyo. I didn't anger a Japanese man with how bad my his job <laughs> He just said I had bad manners. <laughs> That's what he said. Um, and then corrected me. Um, John Jones, Mr. Wrestle, do you agree that Raven is an overrated promo <laughs> and did not have the greatest WrestleMania match ever? If it's not Luke, uh, it's not like you're Luke, yeah? Look, Luke is not the only person who holds the opinion that Raven is one of the best ever and the WrestleMania triple threat is the greatest WrestleMania match of all time. I happen to agree with him on that point. Stuff like that will come up in the Luke detector test because we'll, yeah, we'll I... ask you stuff like that. I'm, try I'm trying to help you out here ahead of ahead of Chopper well, I mean, going crazy. Chant can't or maybe cyan t mr rest talk is so obviously luke it's not check my twitter uh thank you to nintendo doc and amro for your and what's up uh what's up in pro wrestling host mr cool for your super chats no donation i oh, sorry your donations no chats rather do you want to take the last minute ones yeah sure bacon rasher mr davis knows best four out of five show take my money sir just an edel heat seth said to angie i hope she turns out better than your son that's the Ooh. line. That was the line. Well, maybe it does tie into a potential liar heel turn. Charlie Davis, sometimes when I watch Raw or SmackDown and see people who worked with the Bucks previously, like Kevin Owens, and just wish he'd go to AEW. Oh, my God. Me too. And um, Buds, yeah. finally, what do you make of Alexa Bliss's turn to the dark side with The Fiend? Yeah, cool. Hmm. Yeah. And Jobber J. Un 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 unfortunately, WWE have driven out all of the interest that I had in uh, the Fiends uh, over a short period of time. Yeah, I know what you mean. And and the sort of bliss thing, I feel like they've just missed the trigger of interest as well. And Jobber J T J just got one in. My wrestle, Mister Wrestle Talk. My twin says hi. Oh, hello, Juba. Juba, Juba's in there. J nine six nine four. Very good, Juba. Well, that's all we've got time for. Again, we're back to the the stupidly long days of when Luke Owen was here. That's how much chemistry us two have. Thank you so much, Mister Wrestle Talk, for joining us Thanks. here on the show. How was your first time? Oh man, do you know what? it was? It was a lot of fun. If I had an air horn, I, I would sound it, but uh, uh, but I don't think that's really the done thing around these parts. But yeah, I, I had a great time. Yes, please for having me on. It was it was very very kind of you. I will give you a yes, please for that. Ah, for everything you, else, mate. I say no, thank you. But yes, please to you, mate. Best seem like a mate. good egg, a good yeah. egg. Anyway. Best friend. Go over to Wrestle Talk and watch the other stuff that's gone live today. My Wrestle Talk news talking about a WWE star who apparently wants out of the company. He won't be re signing. And subscribe to Wrestle 2 for loads of extra Wrestle, Wrestle Talk content and a few new treats in store later on as well. But for now, including, I've a, very, been including a very fun drunk story uh, from Ollie Davis that's going to be going up on Wrestle 2 today <laughs> where he forgets the worst of Hakuna Matata. Timon and Pumba. <laughs> I've been Mr. Davis. This has been Mr. Wrestle Talk. And that was wrestling. Get that championship. I got my sign off line. Woo. Jam. Bye, everyone. Jam.